In this presentation, I'm going to show you the new Carlson Hydrology 2010 linkages to HydroCAD, uh, the data extraction tools that we've built in Carlson Hydrology to extremely uh, easily uh, prepare a drawing and extract the data that HydroCAD needs to do the stormwater modeling. So the first thing you're going to do is in Carlson Hydrology, uh, 2010 is you'll go to the HydroCAD menu and check the define watershed layers and take a look at this dialog box. Now what you're going to do first, you always want to do first, is set the hydro, hydro method to HydroCAD. Okay, And the second thing you're going to always want to do is load, pick the load button, and here in your Carlson project settings you'll find a HydroCAD RCL file. So you're going to want to make sure you load that to get started. This will give you all of the HydroCAD standard ground covers that you can use in your drawing. There's also layer names provided for each of these, which you can use, what we put together, or if you want to change the layer name for something, just double click and you can change the layer name here. What you cannot change, and it's grayed out so you can't, is the description of the ground cover. That has to be left alone. But the layer name can be anything you want. The hatch pattern can be uh, on whatever layer, uh, pattern, and color that you choose. So anything here is fine that you can change. This one, this one cannot be changed. You can do that for any of these layers or you can just leave them the way that we ship them. Actually works quite well. The next thing you'll do is take a look at the soil line work layers and labels, the watershed line work and, layer, and label layers, and the flow line layers. And again, we've provided some good names here that you can certainly use unless you have other names you prefer to use for layers you can change any of these here. The other thing you're going to want to do is set the default ground type for ground cover. So you're going to pick set and you're going to from this list which again comes directly from HydroCAD you'll pick whatever the default ground cover would be. Maybe you want it to be uh, you know quarter acre lots 38 percent impervious. Um, whatever you want the default to be for any areas that are not uh, covered with specific uh, ground cover uh, uh, closed polylines. So you'll set that. You can also select a certain number of layers here with your control key and say well on my project I've got these here uh, and you can select which ones you're using on the particular project that you're on and then before you leave you can say create layers and it'll say which ones do you want to create all of them the selected ones or none and do you want to create the watershed layers and the soil layers? And I would say yes to these and probably select it here and the program will go ahead and create whatever layers are missing from your drawing to, for you to proceed. Okay, so this is pretty much the first place you want to go. Alright, the next thing you're going to want to do is of course prepare your drawing with the information that, that's needed to do the data extraction. Uh, for soils, you can import a shape file here on the watershed menu we have uh, the uh, import Esri shape file so you can bring in uh, your soil types that way they need to be uh, labeled with A, B, C or D capital A, B, C or D for the hydrologic soil group uh, um, naming and uh, I'll, I'll do a quick view here and I'll show you for soils what we've got I'll set that current and this is what we've developed for our site uh, for this particular site you may have a uh, ground survey that was done, a soil survey that was done, and generating a HIS map, um, and you can use that in here as well. You know, whatever, whatever sources you have for your soils, these do not have to be closed polylines. In this drawing, they happen to be, but they don't have to be as long as the areas are are defined with line work. Um, it'll work and and labeled. And of course, the line work and the labels have to be on the layer um, that is. Uh, uh, described in, in the in the previous dialog box that I showed you. The next thing you probably do might be your ground covers. So if I change my view again, go take a look at ground covers, you'll see that I've drawn closed polylines on the different layers. This is uh, HC roofs, HydroCAD that is, roofs and paved roads with curb and this is paved parking, etc. So you're going to uh, create closed polylines, no labels needed, but they do need to be closed polylines for all of the different ground covers in your particular project. And then of course you have watersheds. So if I say view and we take a look at our watersheds, 
excuse me, you'll see that I've got uh, in this example I have four watersheds. These are closed polylines and again they can be closed or they can just uh, be polylines that that will define an area and then the software will will figure out where it is. Um, either one will work. They're on the correct layer. This is subcatchments is what we're using. They're labeled on a layer called subcat numbers. Uh, again by default you can call it whatever you want as long as it matches. And um, we also have drawn in each of these uh, subcatchments we've drawn a longest flow path. This is on subcat flow lines um, in, in this example. So this is what we're doing for watersheds. Now Carlson has a, a utility here under HydroCAD watershed analysis. It's, it's also under the watershed menu and we can look at a surface and help you with watershed analysis, watershed delineation, uh, location of the longest flow paths and so on. We have software, our software can do that for you and I'm not going to demonstrate that right now because I want to just keep this to a simple version for, for this uh, short uh, presentation but however you want to get these watersheds defined and the longest flow paths drawn and this is for the curve number uh, lag method where we're going to use the average slope for each watershed, each subcatchment and the length of the longest flow path. So that's pretty much the data preparation and if I come back here to uh, combination combo you'll see all these put together. The soils with their labels, the ground covers as closed polys, and the watersheds and their labels and the longest flow paths. From here you're just going to go into what we call the HydroNet Explorer. Looks like this. It's going to ask you to create a new or, or choose an existing HYN, which is a HydroNet project file. It's a Carlson version of it, so we'll make a new one and let's call this uh, demo one, we'll call it demo one and this file will be stored in my project HydroCAD one and it opens up this doc dialog which is the HydroNet Explorer you'll see subcatchments, ponds, reaches and links and they're all empty we also have at, at, at this time no rainfall event, we're going to put the rainfall in over in HydroCAD we go to this button here for tools for settings and we look at the settings and we see the uh, various things, general and subcatchment specifically we're interested in. We need to set the surface file and this is set from the previous time I went through this but this will probably be blank. You're going to hit the set button and pick the surface tin that you're using for this site so that it can get the average slope of course. Uh, I've got left this uh, plan view location for schematics which uh, uses the coordinates of, of each uh, label for each watershed to, to locate it in HydroCAD basically. For the subcatchments I have a default numbering that starts with 1S which actually will not be used because they're all labeled. Um, I'm using the curve number lag method and I'm not processing curve numbers because that will be done over in HydroCAD. I'm also not using a rainfall that will also be added in HydroCAD. So very simple to set this up and really from here uh, the magic is in this button right here. It's a little arrow pointing up. It's the update button and I pick update and it says what do I want to update and I say everything. I want to create new subcatchments and I want to export the data to HydroCAD all in one click. So I say OK and it searches the drawing. It finds the four watersheds. It updates zero because there were none to update but it adds four new ones. You'll see them listed here Here's HydroCAD, there they are. You'll see that for each one of these, if I double click on it, here's 1S as the number, it has the same name. If I look at the area, the total area, I looked at the breakdown, here's all of the sub areas, what their soil group is, what their description of ground cover, the area and the percent. Okay, all of this has been calculated by Carlson. Here's the length of the longest flow path here's the average slope, here's the location for each one of these subcatchments. Of course if I come over to HydroCAD and I set a rainfall over here, let's just go to rainfall and we'll just dial up a couple inches to, as an example here and I double click you'll see here's the hydrograph and of course here's the summary for that subcatchment. Okay, All of the information that's been uh, so tedious for you to generate is now done literally with a single click in Carlson.